Hey, it's been a while since I've done a video on something new. New to you, not to me. Though I don't do this very often. I have a, a client who wanted me to cut a bite plate pocket and put a bite plate in a mouthpiece that doesn't have one. This is a Fat Boy uh, Gardala um, MB2. Originally, that's what it was, uh, made by Nadir, or PMS, doesn't have PMS on it. Um, but anyhow, he wanted this converted from a Michael Brecker 2 to a Michael Brecker 1, and while I had it, put, a, put in a bite pocket and a bite plate. So, what this used to look like this. This is a woodwind and brass wind uh, Michael Brecker 2. Um, so the baffle used to be longer out to here, but I used a Dremel and some files and my, uh, you know, sanding sticks to reshape it down to a Michael Brecker 1 or, or original MB design. So that's where that is now. So, and then the rest of the job is to cut a bite pocket. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't do much of these. I've done it a few times and I'm set up for it, but, um... It takes a lot of brain power for me to try to do this without messing up the mouthpiece. For instance, years ago, uh, I practiced on this blank, and I would, oops, and the, the outside would get a little bump on the perimeter, and then I just kept making it bigger and bigger. Then it gets so big that it wasn't a pocket on the edges because of the curve of this shape. It broke through. So then I had to go a little deeper on the outside just so that I had, um, you know, an edge here in case I ever do finish this and put a, a bite plate material in there, which I didn't do. But now, you know, this is pretty thin. You know, this gauge is pretty uh, is what I use, a thickness gauge, to uh, make sure that things are okay. So let me try to zero. <laughs> it's got a mind of its own. It's very sensitive, so... Oh, it's changing modes. I'm not hitting the zero, that's why. Okay, it's getting in inches, and this is a zero. Okay, and if I go there, the thinnest part looks like this groove is a little lower than the other. We're down to about 20, you know, 30 thousandths or so right at the end. How thick is 30 thousandths? You know, that's a, a 32nd of an inch. So if I open that up, that's about it. So we do have some material there, but if ever I finished this mouthpiece and started working on shaping the baffle, I risk breaking through there. And in fact, um, here's another practice piece I did where I was doing pretty much the same thing, and I went way too deep on the outside groove, and it broke through. So, um, you know, if you only have a bite pocket job to do, I'd recommend sending it to uh, uh, maybe Arnold Montgomery or, or somebody who does mouthpiece manufacturing and is set up to really do this efficiently. But I will I will take a shot at it if you want me to do it as part of another job. So uh, I do have a fixture that I use to clamp the mouthpiece in. This was made for me by a friend, Laurie Waldron. And, you know, it's, it's you, you put the mouthpiece in this fixture, you protect it with some pieces of... Uh, cardboard or whatever material makes sense to you. Do that here, here. These are the contact points. Okay, then it clamps up. It's got jack screws on the sides that move this plate in. So you clamp that up snug. This just makes it easier to hold into the clamp on either your milling machine, or in my case, I'm using a drill press with a uh, kind of like a milling attachment or XY slide. So. Okay, I'm using a 3 16 3 diameter end mill, and uh, I've got some notes and targets, and, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to kind of, like, machine out the perimeter and then chip out the middle, which is the way somebody in production mode would do, but I'm, I'm not confident of my ability to hit the edges right, so I'm going to kind of start in the middle and sneak up on the outside edges. I think that's a safer way to go. 
Here's a look at my drill press based machining setup. My father-in-law set me up with this shortly after I married his daughter. It also has an XY table uh, clamp so uh, so it acts like a little bit like a Bridgeport machining. Okay, I'm setting up this mouthpiece here in the uh, fixture. It is um, needs to be level, and right now it's leaning this way a little bit. Different mouthpieces have different beak angles, uh, so this will this will do better with a a little bit of a shim back here. Then maybe it it might be a little too much, but I think it's all right. All right, um, clamp that there. So this will, I'm going to, you know, center it up somewhere in the middle. And the idea is... Oop. Like I said, I'm going to start in kind of the middle and sneak up to the edges and measure it here and there in between. Now the depth, the way I'm going to uh, set the depth is bring the tool down to, well, let me go to the, yeah, let's go in the middle somewhere. Okay, and what I want to do is set the depth here using a feeler gauge. Let me uh, bring this camera up. So right, right here, maybe a little higher, have this depth. Um, you know, when, when the tool goes up and down, see this has a stop on it right here. So if I set this down and kiss the mouthpiece, I go all the way down. And then I put in, this is how thick I want to, uh, this is a 78 feeler from my uh, refacing set. And I clamp, put this underneath the, the collar and it creates a gap there. So the tool can only go down this far before it bottoms out. Okay, we're going to start her up. pretty good. I'm going to lower it down in there and start sweeping.
Okay. So far, so good. Haven't gone too far. Now, some of you may be wondering why I don't use these. Uh, you know, this is calibrated in inches, but there's a lot of play in these, and it's it's a little difficult uh, to trust them. Uh, and the whole thing kind of shakes a little bit, even though the my shaft is pretty good. The bearings are good here. This whole table does move a little bit. So um, the sneaking up approach is, is going to be best for me. Six twenty three, going for like six eighty five. It may need to go a tad deeper. I don't know. We'll see. And I got six thirty seven. That's about on spec. That way. So I just got to make it a little longer and then evaluate. I may cut, it's, it doesn't have much of a pocket there, but uh, I'll have to measure the thickness before I decide to go deeper. And maybe I'll just make it deeper on the two edges with a Dremel or something. It's got to go a little closer to the tip, according to my mark there. As long as it's centered, it's starting to look pretty good. So I'm going to leave that that way, take it to my workbench, see if I can work with that. Looking pretty good. This is an old bite plate out of a Gardala LT. So it's pretty close. The, um, what else? Uh, thickness wise, fine. 
There's like plenty there. I, pr I probably could have gone deeper. 76, 77. But I'm not going to press my luck. Actually, you see a little bit of silver plating kind of sticking up around the edges. little unevenness in this edge. I'm gonna go to the Dremel and uh, clean it up a little more. Okay, I got it detailed out to where I like it. Using the Dremel, I kind of worked on this back edge here. Back edge across here, rounded this corner, undercut the sides or made the sides a little deeper. So, and the um, client wants a pink bite plate, so we'll move on to setting that and letting it cure overnight. Here's a look at the uh, fume hood I built last month. It's a kitchen range hood that I purchased and then built a box around it. Um, put a timer on it so that I can, you know, set for like two hours, do some smelly work, uh, which is a bite plate acrylic, and uh, it'll shut itself off. You can see that the uh, exhaust is ducted into a flexible duct that goes over to my wall. And this is where my heater used to exhaust out up to the chimney, but um, it was being unused. The new heating system has to have its own PVC vent out the back of the house. So I uncapped it and ducked into it and it's a good solution. that about level. I like to mix the stuff right in the bike, bike pocket. I have um, some of the genuine pink dental ac acrylic that Dave Gardella had. They don't make this any more. They make others that are similar. And I have a monomer here. Let's see, I should get a brush that's decent shape. I usually start by putting, putting a little bit in the pocket on the end of the brush, wetting the pocket. Sometimes I just drop it in, drop it in there. Okay. Sometimes it gets clumpy. I'm still getting used to working under a hood, so it's a little, little awkward, but small price to pay. It 
it's an uh, art to try to mix in just the right amount. It, it, it shrinks a little, and if, if it's too little, you got to do it again. If it's too much, you got a lot of finishing work. So. Different powders behave a little differently. Some get kind of this gooey, snotty texture, but this, this pink stuff's actually pretty easy to work with. It's called Fast Cure. I have the, the brand and the contact, I guess I can't get it anymore. I think it's Fast Cure. some cleanup otherwise it'll make your brush too stiff the next time you try to use it you gotta buy brushes it's a little bumpy it should kind of smooth itself out a little after this stuff starts to dry, I can actually start trimming a little around the edges to help have less cleanup. You know, I use a rag too. You really shouldn't get this stuff <laughs> on you, but I'm, I'm not one of those that is too worried. If it's bare brass, you don't have to be so picky, but if you're trying to protect the finish, you really don't want to be sanding the metal, you know, a lot. Fortunately, these, these uh, PMS are made here. Uh, Gardala replicas have very thick plating on them, which is really nice. In like fact, someone did light, some light um, refacing work on this one. I didn't even break through the plating, except near the tip rail. It wasn't me, but it's a nice job. Now, one other thing you could do is you can actually, if you get a feel for this material, you can come back in like a certain amount of time. Let's say 20, 22 minutes might be it, and then you can actually uh, smooth it out because it starts to set but it's still malleable. This might be a little low right across the front so if I can smooth it out I can push some in that direction. Other than that I'm going to have to scuff it up and put another layer on it. Okay, no, that's good. So I'm gonna, I may try the smooth out trick, because I am worried about that low right across the front. So if that doesn't work, I'll put another layer on, and then tomorrow morning we'll do some, some final shaping. Next day, masked it off, doing some smoothing, work my way down from some coarse to finer sandpapers.
clean up around the area a little bit. Okay. I might take it to a buffing wheel, but that's about what we have. Is it perfect? Eh, not quite perfect. I probably could have sanded these edges a little better before I put the plate on there, but I, I left them sharp just to try to maximize the amount of plating that I wanted to preserve around the area. Yeah. 